More cheap junk from AliExpress. Uh, 8DC European cable. I paid 11 euros for it, including shipping. This is the adapter. I'm a technician, I fix computer quite often. I uh, often buy these universal chargers and uh, well, uh, I do sell them, so I would like to s I would like to know what I'm selling to people. Uh, now sadly, I did sell one of these before I looked inside. Uh, it was an urgent job, so I needed a charger as soon as possible, so I just gave in this one and hope for the best. Here's the box. Polarity, okay. Here are the ratings, 12 volt, 4.5 amps, uh, 15, 24 times 4, that's 96 watts. Let's have a look inside. So here's the adapter. Here are the tips. And here is the... This is supposed to be a grounded connector and this the other side of this cable doesn't have a ground connection. So this third pin goes nowhere. Which I thought was funny, but what can you do? So put it aside. Here's the connector. Oh, this is here's the charger. Looks like this one actually has blue LEDs, which will be pretty annoying. The previous one I had had the green LEDs, which is weird which which means that there are probably multiple different variants of the same adapter which is not a good thing if you want to sell them so in here you can see there is a bigger and a smaller pin this one is a, th a thicker one and this is a thinner one and they fit like this and that's a horrible fit i'm not going to lie now if I plug it in, okay, we are on the 12 volts, so it does appear to work. Let me grab my meter to see what uh, voltage I'm getting. We are getting 12.2, 15.1. Sixteen point oh six. Uh, that's supposed to be eighteen, nineteen, twenty. It's twenty one and twenty four. Twenty four point two. So that's uh, that should be good enough. Most laptops, even though they say uh, nineteen volts, they will work for for on anything from seventeen to like 21 volts no issue now i would like to try to open it i want to see how well it is built then later we will make a load test we will load it to 100 percent and see the temperatures inside how do I, how do i open it I do sell these, so I do not want to break the case if I don't... Oh no, I'm breaking it. Oh. It's not glued together. It's probably just those annoying clips. Okay, so here it is inside. It's it looks like a fairly typical construction. He, these are just the light guides. We have a switch, LEDs. Here's the here's the input, the main bulk capacitor. There here's a controller. Uh, the where the hell is the transistor? It's probably a SMD MOSFET under here. 
a typical transformer, smoothing capacitors and the rectifier. And here's the optocoupler and it does have a proper fuse which is kind of rare. Can I take it out? Can I? Okay, it's being held by a double-sided sticky tape. Oh, what the hell is going on here? Okay, so this is not something I expected to see inside of the cheap AliExpress charger. There are two bridge rectifiers connected in parallel. You usually see that in like uh, Delta FSP power supplies, but I have actually never seen that inside of a cheap power supply like this. That's kind of interesting. Here are the, these are the LEDs, this is the selector switch. And here are the feedback resistors. Here's a TL431 voltage reference, the optocoupler, the transformer. The isolation is uh, good enough. It could be better here. Uh, the class Y1 capacitor, let me just... It is an actual class... No, oh, it's not. It's a class Y2 capacitor. So it's way better than uh, what you usually get in these cheap power supplies. Uh, class Y1 capacitor is a capacitor that's supposed to be uh, between uh, primary and secondary. And class Y2 capacitor such as this is uh, uh, between ground and live and neutral. So it's it looks like a fairly decently designed power supply except... Um, this heatsink is uh, soldered right here and uh, it comes very close to the secondary but it's not connected because this is a plastic body diode so that should be fine uh, one thing that scares me is um, uh, this is not only the controller this is also the only switching transistor inside of this thing so I highly doubt that this thing will be able to deliver full 96 watts of power so in conclusion this power supply doesn't look really horrible designed the only issues I have with it is there is no filtering on the input and uh, this capacitor is a Y2 instead of class Y1 capacitor um, there is no dedicated uh, switching transistor uh, there are also random solder balls everywhere so I should clean that out and uh, the output filtering should be a bit better but other than that it actually does seem like a pretty decent designed power supply so let's put it together and load it up okay so the power supply is currently loaded at 4 amps and while it is loaded at 100%, I'll grab the oscilloscope and we're going to have a look at the output ripple. We are getting 1.71 volts of output ripple, which is horrible. So you see voltage peak to peak, we are at 500 millivolts per division and uh, 
this is 50 milliseconds per division and we're getting currently 1.44 volts peak to peak which is a horrible amount of ripple and the ripple is getting worse it's 1.83 volts uh, peak to peak should be no more than 100 uh, millivolts peak to peak and even that is a horrible ripple uh, a modern high quality power supply uh, will have ripple no more than 30 millivolts peak to peak and here we are not measuring in millivolts this is literally 1.6 volts peak to peak so it's over magneted higher than what we are supposed to be seeing and this is a brand new cup and this is a brand new power supply which means brand new capacitors brand new components and everything is brand new imagine after a few years of use when the capacitors and things wear out the ripple will be horrible and this dirty power can kill a device it is connected to which is why uh, which is uh, one more reason why you should never buy these cheap replacement power supplies so now i feel bad after selling the previous one that i bought although i did buy a few more of these universal universal power supplies to test out and i will see if uh, any of them will be good enough for selling though output ripple i can deal with that uh, because these power supplies can be opened really easily and if i can open it and put uh, a few more capacitors like for example a few ceramic capacitors like this to absorb the high frequency uh, the high frequency uh, ripple and uh, replace the cheap chinese uh, capacitors on the output with uh, with Nippon Chemical or some some higher quality capacitors or even better solid capacitors uh, the power supply might be good because it appears to be pretty well designed though I would not rate this power supply at 96 watts that seems way too much So according to this meter, it's only delivering 2.51 amps, so it is absolutely not true. I want to take the power supply apart and uh, be able to measure the temperature of its internals while it is under load. So let's do that. Okay, so here are the internals. The oh shit, it already smells like burnt electronics. The primary capacitor is super hot. The transformer as well. The output... Fuck! Everything is very fucking hot. So, let's... Grab a temperature sensor. The output diode in open air is at 100 degrees Celsius, and this is at 4 amps. This power supply is rated for 4.5 amps. So, if I, where is the box? So, if I set it back to 19 volts, 4.5 amps, it will be getting even hotter. So, 4.5 times 19 is 85 so that would be 80 watts so delivering even less power than it is now the output diode will be getting way hotter so currently the output they are still at 70 degrees the output diode is at a hundred 
so internally probably over 120 the optocoupler shouldn't be running hot and also this capacitor right here has a dent in it it is at 60 degrees main transformer the transformer is at at 90 degrees Celsius the main chip is at the chip is at a hundred degrees Celsius and that's in open air so this thing is getting absolutely baked Okay, I want to try to test it at, let's see, 4.1, that's 24 volts, that's 20, oh. Hold up, wait a minute, something ain't right. Well, this is getting interesting. So changing voltage does not change so that means that we are probably way under 24 volts we are at 18.69 volts 18.69 times 411 it is currently delivering only 77 watts of power and it is this hot in open air so as I said this power supply does appear not horribly designed but it is definitely not rated for the powers that it claims the diode is climbing at 110 degrees Celsius. The main ship. Still at 100. Web browsing likes were fine as long as you weren't doing anything too intensive. You'll just struggle with some of the more modern parts of the web. Thing is, I oh. remembered that at the boot fair, I didn't just buy this PC. Power supply is really hot. Oh. Yeah, the light went out. It is from our cycling at 75 watts. And it's back. I smell really hot plastic. Okay, yeah, I think that's it. I'll cut the test. In conclusion, it's okay design, poor output filtering, horrible thermal management, and it's not rated for 96 watts. I'll give it... It's fine for up to 65 watts, but I wouldn't push it harder. I hope you found this interesting. I sure did. And yeah, that's this power supply. It did survive the test, but I don't think these two capacitors will survive for much longer at these temperatures.